The sound of boys' voices has been prized by composers as long as music has been written. It is a special sound. It's a gleaming, firm, a uh, very pure sound. There's a cold, almost woodwind sound to most boy choristers' voices. We hear it, and we know it only lasts for a time. And I think that adds poignancy and power to, to this woodwind sound. St. Thomas Church is an unusual church. When you step through those doors on Fifth Avenue and you walk in, you see that Gothic architecture and you hear that sound. It has the effect of pulling you upward and connecting you with God. The music is harmonious with and lives up to the grandeur of the architecture. It fulfills the same purpose, which is to glorify God. I think that is St. Thomas's special gift to New York, that transcendence, that mystery of worship, of the majesty of God, of the mystery of Christ that we give. Tongue twister. New York is unique. One, two, three. New York is unique. New York is unique. New York is unique. It's actually quite a good one because of the K at the end. You have to really work quite hard at that. We all share a very clear common sense of purpose. So my job is, I think, to enhance that feeling of team spirit, supporting one another, being focused, being committed. And I'm really very impressed in the way that the boys achieve that here. Nice release, jaw on the top. One, two. Good. You've got new children coming in, and my challenge is always to try and nurture that sound and yet try and keep the consistency of the sound, but also to try and make every boy feel that they're contributing to that overall instrument, which is the choir. Counting in half, in half notes, remember, so, and the rich, off, just one beat only, and the rich. We teach them the basics of reading music, particularly the singing of the psalms, which we sing every day in Evensong. It's a really quite a complicated process. Nonetheless, that's, that's a great way to start because um, they're very receptive and they're very much on the ball, and uh, we get a lot done in the morning. It does exist there, and it's got a couple of other spots that it's in. But look, it's on the ground. Sir? Yeah, Guys, this is a tricky section because it's not like a ground floor, it's not like the top, it's the in-between. And things that are in-between are not the easiest to capture. The fourth grade teaching job really is a very intense one because it's the first year the boys are in the school and the environment is self-contained. So they're with me pretty much the whole day. And in that room, we're trying to get them on the same page. We're reading one book, which is a classic tale about a doctor who goes into a rainforest and cures the animals. Dr. Doolittle, and what we're also doing then is looking at the environment he was in, in the rainforest, and connecting that to our science lessons. And we'll actually be constructing a rainforest in the classroom. So I'm gonna draw some bats, like, on, on this. So we do projects like that in the fourth grade to make it come alive for them. It's very important, because they are away from home for the first year, and they need a spot where they own it, they can build it, they can make the environment what they want it to be. And I think for a parent, obviously, they're mostly concerned about that nurturing aspect. I think one of the comforting factors for them is that their child is getting a small, intimate environment. So that gives them the comfort zone of what they're looking for. Think back again to the Iraq War. How did they predict that the Iraqis would welcome Americans? What was the prediction? There, th there were some people who were welcoming the Americans, but most of them... Something that a teacher likes, at least I do personally, are small class sizes. It allows you to do a lot. You can really go far and push them. Recognizing that, I mean, I conduct all of my classes in a conversational style. We discuss things, the boys participate. 
and that's much easier to do with a class of eight as opposed to a class of 30. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will shrink from the service of his country in this kind of crisis. Who, what is that summer soldier and sunshine? Thing? It's amazing how early you can begin with, with teaching philosophy or the history of ideas, that there are other ways to, to look at the world. Because in the end, that's what we really want from students, is that they're aware of what's going on in the world, and they're engaged, and they have to see that the past really does have a lot to do with the present. I think they make a more emotional connection to the material. Let us pray. For these and all God's mercies, let us be thankful. Amen. We gather together with the faculty at lunch hour every day, and it's an opportunity really to to hear about the boys' day, uh, what they're doing in their classes, um, things that might even be on their minds that, uh, that come up. What ship was sunk that launched the Americans into World War I? I know this. Um, what is it? Oh. We all sit at different tables, and we sit with the boys, and that's changed every week. So they're constantly sitting with a new group of boys. And it's a time to, to interact with them, to joke, to talk, to discuss things. It's, it's really a nice time that we can all just sit down midday and relax and, and have a conversation outside of what we're doing in the classrooms. That's really the time that we get to see the boys really being themselves. I'm looking for something, though, that he has to take out. Danny? The sharp, the second sharp. Second sharp, how come? I teach classroom music theory. To some extent, everything is new. So I begin with the rudiments, key signatures, intervals, scales, and whatnot. All right, let's hear it. Ta, 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 ta. OK, let's try it one more time. I love to see the creative aspect of the boys because I'm also a composer. I include composition as an important part of the curriculum. There we go. Now I understand it. I, I, I misheard something. Said. That's good. You learn by creating as well as by recreating. F sharp, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp. I would say that I really like the energy. I like the freshness. I love teaching this age group. Excellent. And you'll see there are many other possibilities. Good, gentlemen. If you're a person who's suffering terribly in your own personal life, this picture, which is not a very nice picture, one has to say. How does a picture like that actually give you some comfort? What I like about St. Thomas's is that you have an opportunity to be part of a boy's life at a very formative stage. They're going from being young boys to young men, and you have that opportunity to really instill in them uh, qualities which hopefully will set them up for the rest of their lives. Because the cross is the place where Everything falls apart, and everything comes together. So on three, showtime. One, two, three, showtime! a little bit, please. Uh, get ourselves back into gear. So, beginning of number four, please. Oh, 
Each year before Christmas, we traditionally give two performances of Handel's great oratorio, Messiah. Can we be very careful in that bar of um, Lord Glory of our Lord? There are some boys who sing it for the first time, and they have to learn it. But they get swept along by the fact that the, the other choruses really know it quite well. And my job, I think, is rather like having a pack of cards and just getting everything so straightened out and pointing in the same direction and so on. The really exciting thing about Messiah is, of course, they're, they're making music with other professional musicians. There's an orchestra of strings, oboes, trumpets, timpani. So they have to be absolutely on their metal. I think they'll always take with them um, a, a fundamental love of music uh, and the experience of making music and the enjoyment that that generates in itself. That will be with them for the rest of their lives. I'm mad nervous. Huh. How come? Hug. It's my first dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Two king's sons, once upon a time, went out into the world to seek their fortunes, but they soon fell into a wasteful, foolish way of living. Usually once a week, I meet with the fourth grade boys, just checking in, making sure that everyone's okay, what's gone well, what do we need to work on, and then we end it with a story, sometimes which has a lesson which maybe the boys need to hear, and sometimes a story which I think the boys will simply enjoy, and then they can go on their way to bed. My favorite part of the day is putting the boys to bed. It's kind of their most vulnerable time when they can just kind of, you know, relax. And they're different than when you wake them up. It's, I don't know, it's a very sweet time of the day. Okay, come on, Dylan, get under the covers, please. I have to get my stuff on. A book of idiots. Okay, let's see who this is. <laughs> Okay. Do you want me to save the page, or do I have... Oh, uh, yeah, you can save I do pretty much everything that a mother would do. I do whatever I need to do to make them comfortable and make them enjoy their time here. You know, we become like one big family, Please, no an extended part of their family. Yeah. Okay. Night-night, guys. See you tomorrow. Can I, you, can I tell you something? New York City is an extension of our classroom here. We have Lincoln Center, we have the so Metropolitan think? Museum, West we West have Carnegie Harrison. Hall, we have so much at our fingertips uh, in the cultural life of New York that uh, it's really an extension of, of our classroom. So boys will regularly go out on field trips with teachers to participate in this great life that, uh, that is New York City. It's wonderful. We were looking for a place that could really be set apart from the normal academic education. We are looking for that place that could challenge a young boy to really be the best that he could be on every single day. And St. Thomas raises the bar way, way above normal. To see young people sing as professionals with the men of the choir is special. It takes a lot of musicality. And I think that what they learn here will always be with them. When a boy comes to St. Thomas Choir School, he has put right in the heart of the mission of St. Thomas Church. And we care very much about how the boys perform, how they do in school, how happy they are, because if they're happy, they'll flourish. And we are very ambitious for their future after St. Thomas Choir School.
the religious grounding in the Episcopal faith, the excellence in music, and then the nurturing of this type of intellect makes this a chance of a lifetime for these young boys.